So tell us about playing on the Lou Reed album. Oh yeah, Lou Reed. Well, I was out doing a really dodgy pub gig one Friday night, I think it was, in Ponder's End. And um, when I came back, Elaine was still up because all the lights in the house were still on. I thought, that's strange, it's sort of half past 12 at night. She's normally in bed because the kids were only tiny. And she was still up. She said, guess who's phoned you up? Well, obviously, I couldn't guess who phoned me up. She said, David Bowie. I said, David Bowie? She said, yeah, David Bowie's phoned you up. Want you to go and do some sessions for him? I said, no, nah, it must be John Gorman mucking about. It's one, well, somebody mucking about, you know, it, it can't be. She said, no, it was David Bowie. It, she said, I know it was, it was him. I said, well, what is it that he wants me, he wants you to go and do some sessions? I said, oh, well, I said, did you get a number for him? No. Oh. He said he's going to phone you back. So the next day I sat in the house like this by the phone and it didn't ring. And uh, it went on for quite a few weeks and then suddenly there's a phone call. Hello, is that John? David Bowie here. Oh, hello. Um, would you like to come and play on a, a Lou Reed album? that I'm doing with, with Mick Ronson and a few other people. Yeah, okay. So I got Johan, our roadie, with the Patos to drive me, pick me up and drive me down to the uh, studio uh, in, uh, it's just near the Marquee, I forget the name of the studio now. Anyway, went in there and there's David, all done up in his sparkly trousers and everything, with his missus. Angie Bowie and uh, I thought all I need now is Jim Bowie you know the bloke who invented the knife the whole family of here and there was Klaus Vorman who didn't like me as soon as he saw me I could tell he didn't like me <laughs> and uh, Mick Ronson who I knew uh, very very slightly I knew him he was a, a Pato fan he used to come to see the band I sort of admire Ollie's guitar playing and uh, so I sort of got to know him a little bit. And um, in the corner there was a set of screens with no lights on behind the screens. And uh, there was, um, Lou Reed was in there with dark glasses on and black clothing. I never saw him. Don't recall seeing him, him the whole sort of, I was there from 12 till six, two sessions to do these tracks and I think I did five tracks um, which I was a bit disappointed in once I'd done it because I was so used to playing with my own band Pato and we we just did whatever came into our heads it was quite an amazing band and uh, this is the first session I'd ever done for anybody and it was quite daunting be in a studio with David Bowie, Klaus Vorman, Rick Ronson, Lou Reed and myself and um, you know I was the odd one out really they're all superstars you know and uh, I didn't play very well I remember coming home thinking why was I so nervous why didn't I just play like I normally played uh, but I, anyway it was too late then I thought maybe they won't maybe they won't use what I did because I, I wasn't very happy with what I did, but nerves got the better of me, and there you go, they did use it. And it sold millions. It sold millions on vinyl, millions on cassette tape, and millions on CD. And um, I was just glad for, for my £18 that I got for doing those five tracks. I spent it on sweets.